Hello fashionistas, welcome to 5 to 15 minutes with yours truly, Nina Johnson. So today I am going to be, um, I don't know, maybe I'm going to be a little petty patty. I'm not, I'm going to try to not be petty patty, but I've received several DMs about like, do you guys want me to be meaner? Because I'm not, I can't really read like what you guys want me to be. Um, so I've been getting emails about like what trends do I hate? And I always find that a very odd question. I feel like, do you want me to just be a little bit petty? Because that is in me. Um, not really. I'm generally not a petty person. I'm pretty pleasant. My life's good. Family's good. Kids good. Like, I don't really have a reason to be petty and catty. But I've received this um, message a lot about, you know, what styles should we leave in 2020? Back in 2020, hopefully with the Rona and the pandemic and all that, like, what styles would I be okay leaving behind? So trigger warning, if you have any of these things in your closet and you feel triggered by this, just turn it off, walk away, don't watch. Um, also, if, um, I may be a little bit hypocritical because some of these things I have in my closet and I bought them on a whim and I paid a little bit of money for it. So I'm probably going to wear it for a little bit longer. So you can do that too. I am not the authority on all things fashion. Um, I think I have a little bit of fashion sense, but if you want to say Nina stupid, I'm not listening. It is a free country. Feel free to do that. So don't feel triggered. And if you have any of these things and I see you in them and Instagram, see you wearing them on Instagram, I'm probably going to like it because you probably look cute. I'm not saying these things are ugly. I'm not saying these things are stupid. I'm just saying maybe it's time to just evolve past some of these things. So we're just going to jump right in. Again, I'm not t attacking anyone personally. I'm going to try to cut heads off if I use any pictures. So no one thinks I'm attacking them personally. So jumping right in. So the first one, this may surprise a lot of you, but um, I am beginning to be just a little bit done with Christian Louboutin. Okay. Am I okay? Did the fashion god strike me down? Oh, I'm still living. So uh, let me be clear and kind of give, let me qualify that statement. So there is nothing like a, the Louboutin classics, right? All of his boots, all of his over the knee, like suede boots are just nothing quite like it. And there's nothing quite like a, um, a Louboutin pump, like his classic pumps, a classic uh, black, the Socate or the Pagal or the Pagal Folly, those in black and nude and the animal prints and the whites and the silver is more of the neutrals. Like there's just, I can't think of a prettier shoe. But you'd be hard pressed for the past, I don't know, like four or five seasons, apart from the boots, right? He's had a couple of really color like boots. But if we're just talking about the pumps, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a really amazing like flex on um like bus heads. Do people say that, that now? Busting heads? No, flexing is what the kids say now. So I don't think if you're looking for like a flexing shoe, like past a Louboutin classic will do. Let me put up a couple of these, right? So Louboutin has this one shoe that looks like it's tie-dye, which is I don't or like a watercolor painting. No, thank you. I hate all the laser cut ones. Those aren't nice. And then the graffiti ones, I mean they're an okay shoe. Of course, they're a Louboutin, so will it make your foot look pretty? Yes. But I just feel like the Louboutin game has just gotten so everyday that it's not really a flex. And I feel like back in the day, you'd buy a Louboutin, you'd go to a party or an event, and it was like, you know, you were one of few girls in the room, and now that every girl has on a Louboutin, and lots of girls own the classics, which I think the classics are a staple. But I think if you're looking for like, I'm gonna flex on them shoe, like it's not the Louboutin anymore. So um, I'm not just gonna be all negative. Um, also, the girls are out. Again, we've discussed this. This is a woman show or someone who is viewing, if, if you're not buying what I'm selling, please feel free to stay. If you are a gentleman, this is not for your ears. Um, back on track. So some shoes that I think like if you're looking for like I want like an amazing shoe that's like out of the realm of like your standard Louboutin, right? Like out of the realm of your Socate or, or your Pagal Folly or I'm looking for like a fun shoe. Okay, so now on to the shoes that I think would be like a good 
a good kind of flexing shoe, right? So you have your, your basic Louboutins and now you're like, I want a shoe that not a lot of people have. So people are getting the YSL opium pump more and the opium pump is the one with the YSL on the heel and there's a couple that I think are just super cool right now. I love the brown and I love the slingback. Um, the standard patent has been done a lot, but there's a brown regular pump and there's a slingback that looks like it's embossed uh, croc. And then they have, of course, the booties. And I have the flat booty and the flat leather, but they have a really pretty um, embossed croc booty with the YSL on the heel and the shoe is like killer. So those are a couple of the ones that I think are really cool. So I love the, the brown um, the brown suede pump and that could be done more as like a neutral shoe, especially if you're a darker brown girl. Um, you know, we're not all the classic nude nude, but shout out to Louboutin and shout out to Jimmy Choo and other designers who are making darker nudes and they've stopped calling their nudes nudes or they come up with a nude collection, which are an array of nudes because we're not all one color. Um, so shout out to Louboutin for that, but I have no idea what he's doing with these like graffiti and the super low Louboutin heels. So that's why I sell. Then another brand that I think is just like on point right now is Jimmy Choo. Uh, as far as wedding shoes go, if you are not looking in Jimmy Choo, you are missing out. So Jimmy Choo has the really pretty bling heels. I reviewed those a while back. They have, um, I think it's called the Aveline, the Aveline, or it's really cool. Um, it has a bow on the toe of the right shoe and a bow on the heel of the left shoe. Really pretty shoe. So I love that. And they have those in black and white. They have the bling too, uh, the bling heel in like fun fluorescent colors, like a really pretty pink. So that would be a good like flex on them shoe. Next up, I love Cassidy. Now these shoes are incredibly high. If I'm not mistaken, they are 100 to 130 to 140 millimeters with no platform. So that like is a lot of pressure on the balls of your feet, but they are a sexy shoe. So um, just showing a couple here, the black pump uh, in the blade with the blade heel, they have a white one and a really pretty like blush suede. And then their boots are killer they're over the knee the suede is super rich and black and just it's it's amazing i love it so cassidy is a great brand as well then if you're wanting more of like a doable work kind of high heel um i love the dior slingbacks um i uh i think a couple weeks back i did i showed a dupe for the dior slingback um but I love the Dior sling back with the little polka dots. So that's so dainty and pretty. But then you could also keep it classic and go with a beige sling back or um, they have a patent and a leather form of the, just the standard black sling back. And they even have like a navy one that's super pretty too. So lots of things you can do there. So that's Dior. And then last up, just a couple of honorable mentions. Of course, the Dolce & Gabbana DG sandal so beautiful they have that in black and a pink and and a gold very pretty shoe um gmb to rossi i think they did they did the pvc pump first and they have beautiful boots and heels um and then of course you can't go wrong with a little balenciaga uh the balenciaga knife pump is incredible and um balenciaga also has these like really cool like spiky ones that they're that thin line between hideous and fabulous. I'm not really sure where they're falling. Like this week, I'm totally digging it. Who knows where we'll be next week. And then there is the uh, Bottega Veneta uh, sandal that kind of has a spiral that wraps up your ankle. And you can do a cool trend where you can wrap it up on the outside of like a wide leg trouser and kind of make it tapered and fluted at the bottom. Seen that trend, really cute. So like this over here in the corner. Um, seen that trend, so it's really, really cute. And then of course there is um, Chanel. And you can't go wrong with a Chanel mule. I love um, the Chanel mules, they're so pretty. I have a pair, oh, here. I'm not gonna do this because I can't reach a lot of them, but I have them in white and I love them. I love the pearl on the end. So just think about doing different brands. Um, and then also I can't forget um, another honorable mention here, the Valentino Rock Stud. I feel like people have kind of slept on those. They're super pretty, lots of fun colors. Love them in the red. I kind of love them in the rainbow. Um, 
I like them less in the classic black because I feel like a lot of people do those, but love the, the blue patent here. So lots of fun ways to do um, just a, a different kind of shoe, right? Okay, next up, you guys, last, I just dis Louboutin, and so now I feel like I am screwing with, like, the holy grail of, like, French fashion, because next up, I am over, over, over the Chanel brooch, but specific, okay, am I gonna get struck down by lightning? Like, specifically, I'm still alive. Okay, thanks, Gabrielle, for not striking me dead. Um, so specifically, I love all their brooches, right? Their authentic brooches are beautiful. I'm more so over them being worn, kind of like, I don't know, disrespectfully. If you take a Chanel brooch and pin it on a bodycon dress from Rainbow, it does not elevate that look. Like, you've got to start with a good foundation. And I feel like if you're not going to pin it on a lapel, like, let me just show you some things that... Like just sticking it on a dress from like Forever 21, if it's not a quality dress. I mean, if you get like a nice tweed, then that's one thing. But just sticking it on a polka dotted dress or sticking it on a sweater, I mean, it just, you, you put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig. So you, you have to be thoughtful in the way that you're going to wear your brooch. If you're not going to wear it on a lapel, then be creative. Um, you can wear it on the... Uh, the very top button of a white button down or a white shirt dress or not white but just any kind of like button up you can wear it kind of like a bow tie which I think is cool you could pin it on shoes or pin it on um, designer handbags uh, on your Chanel handbag or just any tweed handbag so if it's not gonna go on the lapel of a substantial um, blazer because you also think too you're putting a hole in your clothes right so you want it to be something that's more of like a woven fabric something heavy and more substantial so think about kind of think about where you're placing your um, your brooch don't just like throw it on any outfit without any thought I also saw in a Gucci ad where they um, pinned it on the top of my battery is dying on the top of a, a turban which i thought sorry my battery just died rookie move uh but picking up where i left off i've seen brooches on turbans so just be thoughtful about like where you put the brooch don't slap it on and also there are lots of designers that have really cool brooches gucci has some cool ones saint laurent has some really pretty ones like ysl that's like oversized and i have one that spells out saint laurent that i'm gonna wear at some point so uh, be mindful that you can, you, Chanel, it is the holy grail, but it is not the only brooch available at your disposal. So think of, consider that when wearing your brooches. Okay. Like if I know I start, started, this with a big trigger warning. I started this with a big trigger warning, but, um, trigger, trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. If you have any of these items moving forward, like continue to wear them. I'm just saying if you're maybe in the market and you're shopping, maybe don't buy these items because I feel like they're on their way out and maybe they should be. So I want to spend the remainder of this video talking about the official uniform of pumpkin spice. First up, now I cut this lady's head off because she just minded her own business and she just happened to be like the example I needed. The cable knit sweater tucked in with a French tuck or a front tuck and the uh, these tan over the knee boots that were inspired by the Stuart Wiseman Highline boot, the over the knee boot that was super, super pretty. They don't make this color anymore um, because I just feel like this is done too much. So first we're gonna start with the thing that bothers me in this picture is the tan over the knee boots. Now I've owned these boots. I've since sold mine and replaced the color because I feel like this color has just done so much. You guys, does it not look like this sweet girl who is probably the nicest girl in the world? And if I saw this on Instagram, I mean, she looks cute. I would like it, but I am a luxury kind of, um, I'm interested in high fashion. I'm interested in new things. So would I buy this? No. If I saw her on Instagram, would I like it? Yes. Would I probably be friends with her in real life? Absolutely. Would I ever be rude about her outfit to her face? Of course not. She looks beautiful. It's a beautiful outfit. She's probably a really pretty girl. You don't know because I cut her head off to protect the innocent. I don't know who this girl is. But I just feel like we have all seen this a bit much. And I think it would be okay for us to leave it in 2020. So first up, the boots. So 
Again, this was inspired by the Highland, this boot that I have up right now. And Stuart Weitzman's not doing this boot in that like honey tan color anymore. They're doing a really cool taupe. Um, they're doing a chocolate brown, which chocolate brown is making a comeback. And I feel like um, what tan was to like, remember like when it was like not cool to buy a chocolate brown boot and you want it more like a camely honey tan color. I feel like we're just flipping that on its head now. Like I feel personally that I'm seeing a lot less of tan and more of like a chocolate brown. Like Bottega Veneta is doing lots of shoes in this really pretty chocolate brown. And then Stuart Wiseman, of course, has this boot in chocolate brown. And they also did this boot in a very, very pretty beige, which you gotta be a brave girl um, to wear this color boot. Brave or stupid? I'm stupid. I bought this color boot from Aquazira. Am I saying that word right? I can't remember. No, no, I'll correct myself if I'm not correct. If I'm not pronouncing it correctly, I'll put the brand name below. But I bought an over the knee boot in this color because I love this sand kind of off white creamy color. It's really pretty, but it's really dangerous in a shoe. And then they have a, the this boot in like a soft brown leather to a uh, brown. That's not brown. It's curly back. They have it in a black leather too, which I think is super gorgeous. So. I'm not saying over the knee boots are out. I'm saying this particular boot, I just want to be done with it. And it is a designer inspired version of the Highland. And I feel like once the designer stops doing the designer inspired version, like it's just time to put it to bed, my personal opinion. And you know what? You're allowed, it is your money. You're allowed to spend it however you want. Don't even, you don't even listen to me. I could be 100% wrong. These are my personal opinions. I'm responding to people who DM'd me and asked me specific questions. And depending on how this video does, I may never do this again. So um, here's a picture of the um, Aquazira boots that I own that I think are really pretty. And then um, you could also do the, I talked about the Cassidy earlier. So they have a really cool like platform version of their blade pump, which is super sexy. Now, if you are just married to that tan color, I would say don't do it in like a suede or a faux suede because I feel like that's what makes it look, just feel like I'm gonna get a pumpkin spice latte from Starbucks. Also, I'm hating on pumpkin spice lattes, but I freaking love it. And I cannot wait to get my next fix of pumpkin spice. So like, let's just be clear. Like I do love pumpkin spice and there ain't nothing wrong with it. But I mean, I'm just over the pumpkin spice uniform boots. Um, you could even do, uh, I digress. Um, you could even do it in uh, a leather. If you're wanting to do the tan, you could do the tan in a leather. And I think that just updates the look. And also not doing it in a block heel because I feel like um, that particular heel shape is a little bit dated too. If you're just doing it with that heel shape in tan, it just starts to feel very 2020, 2019. I would also challenge you to try like a color boot and I'm showing this boot. I don't know which brand this is. I can't see. Is this Miu Miu? Um, but like a pink would be cool or uh, Balenciaga does like purple and turquoise and red. So, you know, I wouldn't advise, I would never do this, but if you're balling, do it. I would never spend tons of money on like a pink boot. So I would probably get that designer inspired for sure. And Amazon has all kinds of um, designer inspired, like over the knee fun color boots that you could do. And so does um, Misguided as well. So lots of places where you can find designer inspired color boots, but I would challenge you to do a color even. And then um, if you're not gonna do a color, we're back to like the creams and the whites. Saint Laurent has the most beautiful over the knee slouch ivory boots with a brown uh, block heel. So those are really pretty too. Um, and you can find designer inspired version of that boot at Zara.com or I even think Mango may have a fun kind of over the knee white boot that you could find too. But try some different colors. And then I just have some pictures of some girls that I think are like doing it right, right? So this first girl, I like that you know, we're, we're, we were seeing in the past lots of like chunky kind of cable knit sweaters. Again, the French tuck or the front tuck and, you know, a high waisted denim and then the over the knee boot. And I just feel like maybe you could do it in a different way. Like you could try it with a boyfriend blazer, belt it, do it with a, in this time of year where it's kind of transitioning, like it's almost officially fall, but you still get warm weather. Do your over the knee boots with like a flowy kind of dress, not high low, cause I'm kind of over high low too, but maybe an asymmetrical hem would be pretty too. You could also do it, um, again, here's an example of the colored boot. Love that. Uh, do it with something really feminine on top too, like really feminine. I love, 
um, uh, uh, what is her name? Alessandra Riche. She does really pretty, like, feminine dresses, really flowy. They're really expensive, but Zara does a lot of those type of inspired dresses. So doing something like that, really flirty with, um, with an over-the-knee boot is cool. And then, of course, you can't go wrong with your white boot. And uh, I like it with leather shorts. I think that's really cool and on trend to do your boots with a pair of, like, leather shorts. And then, of course, this is, like, totally Nina, houndstooth and black boots, but nothing fun there, just classic. Um... And then just put up some other images, just kind of honorable mention here. I love the satin skirt with the cable knit sweater, super on trend. I think that never goes out of style. And then if you want to do something monochromatic, I love this picture with, um, oh God, Gigi Hajid is doing like a cashmere dress with the taupe, Stuart Wiseman's, and love those to death. So I think those are really pretty. Okay, so now we're back at my girl here, right? So the next issue I have... Don't hate me. And I also, I like have all of these things that I'm saying we need to just kind of slowly phase out of our wardrobe. But the next thing that I wanted to mention was the never full tote. Um, I blame mothers, me included. We have turned that bag into a diaper bag and a travel bag so it doesn't feel high fashion. And so when you're wearing it like it's high fashion, like this or this, or this. That girl's got pumpkin spice in that cup. You know she got some pumpkin spice in that cup. Or even this. It just doesn't like read and I feel like we should be wearing our, um, we should be using our Neverfuls more for like travel. And I've used mine, I'm not even trying to be funny, but I've like used it to like put beach towels in because it's just so massive and you can just tuck a lot of stuff away in it and the straps are super strong so it's a good bag. I just don't see it like carried as like an arm tote. I feel like it's a weird length. Um, it's more of like a shoulder bag and it just feels like I'm lugging a ton of things and I don't know, I see it and I feel like it is the official like diaper bag which I think it's great for that. If you get an organizer and you're a new mom, you need the organizer though if you use it as a diaper bag. Like use a little organizer inset, put your diapers in it. It's fantastic. I just don't see it as a like fashion bag anymore. Um, but that is my opinion. And if you're wearing it as a fashion bag and I see you in it, or if I see you in it on Instagram, I'm going to like it. And I'm going to say, do you boo? Because it is all up to you. But I personally feel like we should be carrying it more like this. So, and she is so cute. And then she is in this jacket with gold buttons. Shout out. You look really cute, girlfriend. Um, but so if you're looking for, if you're an oversized bag girl and you are trying to stay with, uh, Louis Vuitton, I think that the, well, let me backtrack. If you want to stay with Louis Vuitton, but you're not necessarily married to the oversized bag, I would say go back to a Speedy. The Speedies are making a comeback. Um, the good thing is get it now before it's like back back because a lot of the second, uh, the pre-loved sites, they're not terribly expensive. Like I've seen them, at, I've seen them as low as 500 and depending on what kind you get as much as like 13, but you can probably find a sweet spot in the middle where you can get something really fun that's like a fun color or you could do the shearing bag which i think is really fun there's the newer print for the lv in the speedy um which i think is a fun print it looks tribal and and then there's a classic the two classics right uh the classic monogram um and then you could do like the classic a classic black or something so i would encourage you to look at the speedy if you just love the lv and you want that look but then if you want the space on the speedy and you want to carry it more like a fashion bag i would say go like book tote route like um the the go tote so i love the go tote in black i think it's super chic you could also do it in the standard uh brown monogram and you could also do it in the white i also like that it has like a crossbody strap and so if you're a big bag girl and you're gonna pack that mother full this is a great one a great alternative for you and then if you're okay with leaving louis vuitton um fendi has a bunch of really beautiful totes i love this kind of like carpet bag shut up mary poppins kind of carpet bag uh fendi tote i love that the handles aren't terribly long the one problem with that is if you're at the karen's at the airport like your never full is great because it kind of just you can pull those big straps like over your roller bag this one you would need like to go get one of those little like hooks that you could hook through your carry-on and then you just 
it's like a, I'll, I'll show it in their video, but it's um, just like a little hook that you can hang this bag on because it's not, the straps are more shallow. And then Fendi has a leather version. This version, let me go back. The version that was the carpet bag is, is 2400. And then there's some leather version. There's a leather, like in a tan, um, that's 3700 on Farfetch. And then there's a white that's 2700. And then Fendi even has a canvas one that's very, very pretty. And I think the canvas one is around 17. And then, of course, um, there's Saint Laurent. Saint Laurent has a couple, and so does Christian Dior. Is my battery seriously dying again? This cannot be a thing. I'm seriously on the struggle bus today. Um, so I think I talked about the Fendi canvas tote, the one in um, black and white. And then I also like the Saint Laurent. They have a couple of totes that I think are really pretty. And they're a good price point at around $1,200. And then, of course, my favorite book tote is the Dior book tote. I don't think there's a better bag out there. And if you get the all black kind of murdered out leather one, that one is probably close to four or $5,000. Um, Pre-owned, I'm not really sure what it would be new, but I know that that's and the pre-owned price could be inflated given the availability. And then I just like the, the classic book tote retails around $3,000 and you can get it on a couple sites in between like 25, uh, 2,500 and 3,000. So lots of options there. And sorry, my battery died twice. And this whole video was kind of a crap show. Um, but thank you so much for joining me. You guys, if you have any of these items, I say continue to wear them. You know, again, I am not the end all be all like fashion god. Um, I mean, in my head, maybe, but like in real life, no. Um, so if you have these items and do you want to wear them? And if you don't want to ignore everything I'm saying, go for it. But for those of you who had questions, these are my personal opinions about it. And I do think that if you haven't purchased these items and you are getting ready to invest in them, um, maybe consider something a little bit different uh, because I do feel like you kind of, I kind of take my cues from, um, all fashion takes its cues from the runway, right? And so if you're seeing things kind of pull back on the runway, it's only a matter of time before the people are trying to do like new things that these designers are doing on the runway. So when it starts to phase out the designer version, it's only a matter of time before your uh, fast fashion places follow suit and they carry less of those items and those items just slowly start to phase their way out so um hope i didn't lose anyone also you guys i never say this but because i feel like it just seems really thirsty but if you enjoy what i do i encourage you to tell your friends to follow me on instagram and then to follow me on youtube um you can go to my website and have a link to this video on youtube and you can watch the full thing on youtube um so if you like anything i do here um share it with your friends and please ask your friends to follow and you follow on instagram and i will be back soon um my next video it's going to be some amazing designer inspired items that i found from amazon and also some really cool winter kind of fall trends that i found at nordstrom.com for a really good price so you guys i hope to see you next time thank you so much for joining me sorry this video was kind of painful from a technical standpoint and i will see you guys next time hug each other love each other and stay well